Okay, so this is uh, well, I don't have the microphone, so get that. Okay, so this is lecture thirty seven. And what we've been seeing is uh, going through the entire system for say BPSK, entire transmitter and the entire receiver block by block, trying to make some plots of the actual signal. Okay, so how the signal looks like, what information can we get out of the signal, and what we hope to see. Okay, so that's the kind of thing uh, we are trying to do. So let me see. I think we were at a point where so BPSK was kind of done, right? We finished. BPSK more or less, right? So uh, with with rectangular pulse, that's what we did. BPSK with rectangular pulse is what we did. Okay. An interesting thing to try is QPSK. Okay. So I want you to at least the transmitter part, the receiver part, maybe we won't do in great detail. So transmitter part, so you have a rectangular pulse once again for the transmit filter, and your signal SK is going to come from plus minus one or Plus minus j. Okay, so this is signal is one from zero to t. Okay, that's your transmit filter. All right, and then you do multiplication by. Well, I'm I'm going to write it as e pi j two pi f c t, and then a real part. That's the right thing to do here. Okay, so I'm going to call this. X of t. So I want you to take a simple sequence for S k. Say for instance, one j uh, minus one minus j. Okay, just a sequence. Okay, and then plot what X of t will look like. Okay, and assume uh, F c times t is four, for instance, just to say four four cycles of the carrier will come into one simple period. So we can assume F c times t is Say three or four, whatever is com comfortable. Then make a plot of x of t for this input sequence. It's a little bit more challenging than the BPSK case. So let's see how it works out. Okay, so it's always good to start out with an expression for x of t, then try to plot it. 
but the expression can be a little bit uh, devious for instance let's do it symbol by symbol okay so the reason is there is g of t minus kt and then this one t minus kt which will show up in everything and if i write it uh, summation it might be a little bit misleading but anyway so i'll try it let's see let's see how it goes if you look at say 1 times e power j 2 pi of ct and then you take its real part what's going to happen you will get cosine 2 pi of ct there's no problem if you take j j times e power j 2 pi of ct what do you get minus sign so see all these things don't write it as minus sign it will only get confusing if you write it as minus sign right stick to cosine then then you will know what phase shift to introduce at the place where the phase changes and that might be easier to plot okay so if you like minus sign that's also fine but you remember you are doing a time shift and a phase shift is with the same uh, cosine or sign a phase shift is easier to plot sometimes okay so if you were to write it in cosine what would it be yeah so cosine 2 pi of ct plus pi by 2 okay so it's the same as that sinusoid except that there's a phase shift ahead by pi by 2 the same thing will happen if you do minus 1 minus 1 would be cos 2 pi of ct plus pi okay and then minus j would be plus 3 pi by 2 okay so so that's the way to visualize the modulation so once you visualize it that way plotting it is presumably a little bit easier so you do that Okay, so you begin with the cosine. So maybe we'll do one, two, three. So you do three cycles of a cosine. Okay, and then what should you do? You're doing a j, which means so you have to start from zero. Do you see that? So there'll be a sharp fall here. Start from zero and go in which direction? Go downwards. Okay, so there's a advancement of so it's one cycle, two cycles, and then three cycles. So that's where it ends. And then what do you do? One more phase shift by pi, pi by two. Okay. So you'll have one cycle, two cycles, three cycles. Okay. So my plot is going so hopelessly off scale that I should do something about it. Okay, so one is the second one, and this is the third one. Okay, and then the last one is once again another pi by two phase shift, but this time it will go up. Okay, one, two, three, and it stops. Okay, so that's how x of t is supposed to look. Okay, so it's clearly a passband signal, right? Passband signals, how do they look? They typically have an envelope, and then there is a sinusoid going up and down inside them right so this is clearly a passband signal and if your fct is larger as would be the case in most cases you will have a lot of wiggles going back and forth in the sine wave okay so that's the that's your x of t okay so this is going to go through the channel right noise will get added and then what do you do for the receiving okay so you do band pass filter followed by phase splitter then multiply by e power minus j and then proceed so on and so on. okay so sometimes you may not want to implement the phase splitter also see there's another way of doing it right so you do bandpass filter then you maybe go ahead and multiply by e power minus j and then what would you do you do a low pass filter to get rid of something else that might have come in so in the analog implementation it's not clear what else will come in sometimes people do the whole thing in digital at that time something else can come in because of the aliasing so you might want to do a low pass filter followed by that okay so that's also another implementation okay so if you do if you don't like implementing phase splitters that's a good implementation as well okay so this is uh, this is qpsk any questions on this how i got this okay is that clear okay since it was qpsk it worked out reasonably okay okay so if i were to try 16 qam what will happen What do you think will happen? How do you think this thing will look? Yeah, so there will be a change in amplitude also. Do you see why there will be a change in amplitude? It has to be there, right? So, because 16 QAM has different amplitude things. So, the envelope will not be 
flat but it's a bit of a nightmare to draw because you have both a sine and cosine so how will you tackle that how do you draw when this both sine and cosine yeah. I'm sorry I'm sorry Baseline. yeah so you have to convert it into one sinusoid but you will get some some face and you can also figure out what that face will be it's not that difficult right so depending on where that point is just look at that angle and you will know it some angles are easy even in 16 km some angles will have a strange tan of 3 or 1 by 3 or whatever I mean it's let just let it be that way and then you know but you know what the angle is so you'll know what face to shift by okay so the whole thing whatever whatever way you draw it ultimately will look like this even 16 km will ultimately look like this well there will be a change in amplitude but there will be also be a phase shift there can also be a phase shift okay depending on what the transition is okay so this is how the passband signal will look in qam okay, it will have an envelope there will be a lot of variations inside it there will be both a phase shift and an amplitude shift in the general case okay and for the receiving you do bandpass filter followed by the down conversion low pass filtering and then you process your match filter okay so that's what you do all right so this is for the rectangular pulse case so once you move to a square root raised cosine pulse there are a lo lot more choices to be made and you have to be careful about it okay there will be lots more delay in the system so so far we never worried about delay right this is rectangular pulse you can happily do whatever you wanted once you do square root raised cosine there will be delay why am i saying there will be delay yeah it's a two sided pulse right square root raised cosine is two sided right finite bandwidth and it goes for a long time so you will have to delay the whole thing to get a practical implementation Okay, so what I'm going to do now is BPSK with square root raised cosine. We'll do it roughly first, and then I also have some MATLAB code to show you in a very smooth way how it how the whole thing looks. Okay, so but for now I think it's good to first do it by hand so that you get a feel for how these things work out, and then you can go through and do the MATLAB code. Okay, so we're going to do BPSK with square root raised cosine pulse. Okay, square root raised cosine is your transmit filter. Okay. So, so the first choice to make is about G of T itself. Okay, this is your transmit filter response. Okay, what are the various things to choose for a square root raised cosine? I'm sorry? The roll off factor, right? So I don't know if I call it alpha, or beta, or whatever. So something, the roll off factor you have to choose. So basically you have to figure out how much bandwidth it will actually occupy. So it will be some 1 plus beta times divided by 2t. Okay, so this beta you have to decide. This will be your bandwidth. And based on the beta and the bandwidth, you will get a symbol rate. Okay, so all these three have play a role in deciding your transmit pulse. Okay, so usually your bandwidth is fixed and you want a certain symbol rate or a certain spectral efficiency which means certain number of bits per symbol so you go back and work it carefully so we've done a few problems on this right so you know how to pick these betas and 1 by t so you'll get a 1 by t okay so that's the theoretical expression so now we'll get a huge big uh, expression with you know what that expression looks like so sine and a cosine and all these things it 1 by minus 4 4 beta t by t whole squared all these things show up in that expression okay so in practice you have to truncate so so Truncate as in you have to, you can't implement an infinite response. Okay, so that's one thing. And the other thing to keep in mind is nobody will implement this filter in analog. Okay, well, I'm saying nobody. There might be somebody who does, but most people would implement such filters in digital. What do we mean by implementing this filter in digital? So, way you do it is there will be something called an arbitrary waveform generator. So, basically, you sample this raised cosine. How will it look? So, it will look something like this. Okay, so I'm drawing square root raised cosine will have a slightly larger tail as opposed to the, okay, so it will be symmetric, it will look something like this, okay. So what will be this, so this will be, so if you take this as your origin, what will be this length? One by t, right, so every one by t it will go off to zero. Okay, so all these guys will be 1 by t, 1 by t, so on. Okay, so every 1 by t it goes to 0, right? So that's why you get the ISI property with an ideal channel. Okay, so every 1 by t it goes to 0. So pretty much the choice you have to make is how long will the G of t be in terms of your symbol period? 
okay so that's the choice it's the first choice you have to make okay so a typical thing might be you might want to have say some 10 lobes on the right and 10 lobes on the left which means you will have 20 times the symbol period or maybe you have five lobes on the right five lobes on the left whatever choice I mean depending on what your system can afford you make that choice okay so maybe you put say five times t here and then five times t on this side okay so that's the first choice you make after you choose a beta and a one by t you decide how long how, how much you at, at what point do you want to truncate your trace cosine the next decision is in a digital implementation you have to figure out how much you want to sample this okay so so maybe i mean depending on what follows next what uh, depending on your digital to analog converter finally you might want to make such choice some way but maybe you want to choose some 10 or 20 or and sometimes it might even be five or six I mean, depending on how much you can afford for instance people who are doing the lab usually produce this in digital and then you give it to a sound card so sound card has a certain sampling frequency so you can only sample this at a certain frequency so if you pick a certain one by t maybe you sample this at 22k for instance okay and if your one by t was i don't know 100 hertz then you got a over sampling of what whatever whatever fraction if it was 1k then you got a over fraction of over sampling of 10 times okay so so ultimately this thing is also sampled you have samples of this stored in some memory okay and when a symbol comes in if the symbol is plus 1 you simply read out those samples and give it to a d2a which is going to do simple interpolating digital to analog conversion and you get your g of t out okay so this is a very common way of implementing these filters and it's very popular also today many people uh, use such things okay in fact i believe there's even a patent out on this arbitrary waveform generators okay so but it's a very nice nice and simple implementation and it works out very well okay so that's how that's how you typically implement this so those are the choices you have to make for g of t okay so suppose we did five five on five five lobes on the left five lobes on the right that's what we did for g of t okay so once you do that your your thing is it's quite clear right so you have an s of k goes through a g of t okay and you produce say x1 of t then you multiply this by Okay, so I'm doing BPSK, so I'll write simply as cos 2 pi of CT, okay, and you get X2T, right? So if I'm doing any other modulation, I'll have to write E power J and then take the real part. I'm doing BPSK, so I might as well multiply by cosine, okay? So I want you to make careful plots of X1 of T, so maybe you just cho choose this as 3T, okay? So for simplicity, for the plot's sake, instead of choosing 5T, Maybe you just choose as 3t so that your plot will look much cleaner, okay? And you can choose a large enough scaling so that you can clearly show, okay? So this is a good exercise if you've not done it before and if you've never seen these things in action, okay? You'll see how it looks like. Try to plot it for s of k equals uh, plus one minus one minus one plus one, okay? Plot x1 of t first and then we'll plot x2 of t. Just put three lobes. So if you pick three lobes, how will it look? Uh, it's just what? 1 by 2, 2 by t 2. It'll look like this. Oops. No, it'll just go up after this. Okay, so the g of t will look something like this. Okay, so so the way we defined it, what will be this value for the square root raised cosine? Any of you remember? No. For the raised cosine, it will be one. Okay. For the square root raised cosine, it won't quite be one. It will be something slightly larger than one. Okay. So anyway, so it, that's how the plot will look. Okay. So this is zero. Uh, well, I'm drawing it very badly. One by t, one by t. By t, one by t. Okay, same thing happens on this side. Make a plot of x1 of t and x2 of t for this case. Assume fc t equals 3.
see it's a bit devious right it's not as straightforward as the rectangular pulse which nicely died out after 0 to t there is some something floating around and you will carefully plot it Okay, so let me do this. So someone with very questionable drawing skills like me is going to have a tough time. So maybe some of you can do this very well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. So the first, uh, the first thing is going to look something like this. I'll assume the lobes are really, really high so that, I'm sorry, is it fine? 1 by t, 2 by t. Okay, it's going to come back here again. That will be very symmetric. What about the next one? It's going to start here, right? It's going to look like this. And oh, it's minus 1, you're right. See, there you go. Once you see it's minus 1, the whole thing changes. So it's going to change sign, it will look like this look like this and then it will go down all the way down and come back down here and go this way okay so that's the second one now about the third one it's minus one again so it will go right
it will be a simple time shifted version of the previous pulse and then the last one is plus 1 it is going to be like this like this and then it will go on top did I get that right no it should go a little bit more to the right Anyone here who got a, how many engineering drawing courses do you guys have in this? Yes. Only one? Anyone who got a yes? How many of you got yes? Okay, so you guys must be able to draw this much better. I have never got any grade better than B in my engineering drawing. So, so there you go. That is. There it is. So, so now what do you do? You have to add up all these things okay so the first the easiest ones to add are the first and the last okay and then maybe this one will go a little bit more down this will maybe roughly cancel or bring this down a little bit okay so no 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 it has to go all the way up because it will be it will go to zero then okay so i have to be careful so you might as well draw this as it is but it will bring it down a little bit but not too much and then it will come down very sharply to join this very five very very soon and then in fact it will go okay so my drawing has gone totally for a toss okay so let me redo this part a little bit okay so it has to go through this point and then come back and then go through this point again and then it is going to go through that point okay then it has to go through zero here right so it has to come back almost touching the same thing and then maybe go here and then join so that's how your uh, thing will look so maybe I'll draw the final curve in red just to illustrate how it looks There you go. Okay, not a bad picture, I guess. There was one point where it became a little bit uh, bended back to the left too much, I guess, but overall it turned out okay, right? Kind of conveys the picture. All right, so this is how you transmit pulse, the baseband transmit pulse. This is what is called the baseband transmit pulse, right? Before you upconvert, this was your transmit pulse. So remember again. We, I drew it as a continuous curve and in most implementations this is going to be discretized. This is going to be oversampled and given to a analog, digital to analog converter to get the analog versions. So maybe even you do the multiplication in digital. Multiplication by e power j 2 pi of ct may also be done in digital. right? So, so, so many things are possible. Okay, So all these things are uh, dubious whether they are digital or analog. This is how uh, the plot would look. Okay, Any questions as to how I got this? This is clear, right? Okay. So now the next step is to multiply this with cosine 2 pi of ct when you have a, a plus 1 and minus 1. So so now you can forget about plus 1 and minus 1. Okay, you've got the entire baseband transmit pulse. So don't no no need to take care of plus 1 and minus 1. The only thing you have to do is multiply this by cosine 2 pi of ct. Okay, so there you have to pay attention. Okay, so the, the easiest way of doing this is to finish up what's called the envelope symmetrically. Okay, so do a minus of this. Okay, so once you do that, why am I doing a minus of this? So then you, when you do a cosine, it will only be contained inside that and you will get the nice envelope. Okay, so that is the way to do it. I will try to do that here. So I will draw. Okay, so maybe I should draw the negative also in red so that. Makes the whole thing easier. If you do the negative also, okay, and then maybe I will draw the envelope in green, okay. So remember I have to allow for three uh, 
cycles inside each time period okay so that's the only thing i'll, I'll simply take a sign okay so, so i'll start with the zero phase here one two three okay so that's how the waveform will look and then i do one two three okay that's how the second one will look the third one would be one two three okay and then the fourth one would again be okay there might be some phase changes i'm not taking care of it i'm just happily drawing a sign inside each of them one two three okay and a one oh well actually it should be more than three i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry here you should get a total of nine okay i'm sorry i'm sorry for this okay so actually right so roughly about there should be more cycles because this this whole envelope is closing in more than one by d okay so there'll be more than this i'm sorry so you see so take care of that number okay so it will be it's tough to count it exactly so but you'll get a rough rough estimate okay so you you kind of know that so in general i think if you just draw something like this you'll be okay okay for instance in an exam this would be considered an okay passband passband signal okay so and you see the the envelope clearly is the baseband signal that you want all right okay so now the next question is the receiver okay so now when you move to the receiver okay you do a bandpass filter okay you get r of t you do a bandpass filter okay in practical implementations it's important that you do a bandpass filter first and then multiply because sometimes there be all kinds of noise if you do anything else it's good to first do a bandpass filter and there might be because there might be other transmitters using radio spectrum right next to you so you don't want to let in all that in anything you do into baseband so you just do a bandpass filter first get what signal you have so this, that's why i'm doing a bandpass filter and then a phase splitter may or may not be necessary so you might be able to just get away with so usually maybe you just get away with doing a sampling here you sample here and then you do multiplication by e power minus j 2 pi fc t okay so well it cannot really be fc it's only be some f1t okay so maybe it's nominally equal but there will be an f1t plus plus theta also right so there'll be some some phase also which you can't get track of so maybe i'll just keep that there okay so something like that you do and then you do a low pass filter and digital okay so the reason why you need a low pass filter and digital is when you do this multiplication in digital when you have over sampled it there's going to be an alias thing from the other side that might come in okay so and you want to get rid of that by doing a uh, doing a band pass filtering okay so something else can come okay so so anyway in general it's good to low pass filter this after you bring it down to the this uh, what do we say to the base band okay so you do a low pass filter you get 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 only your uh, base band signal okay so this is uh, uh, this is this is so this is what do we want to do so i want to write down what this will look like uh, maybe i'll call this yeah so so after you multiply by e power minus j you will have actually complex right so you have to keep track of both i and q okay so and maybe you do a low pass filter you keep track of both i and q and then you decode uh, i and q with a match filter so right now you have to do a match filtering okay so what is match filtering g star of minus t okay so you have to convolve with yeah g star of minus t so once again it will be a sampled version that you had before for g of t and then g star of minus t is going to be a total uh, causal thing but when you shift it back you will pretty much get the same thing so in fact here you will have this exact say, g of t that you had before okay right so so that's the g of t okay and then you do a sampling at kt plus tau okay so can you get a rough estimate for this tau the delay okay so g of t originally has been you you've included 3t on the left and 3t on the right okay so what's a rough estimate for tau okay so you pick order for your filters okay so you do uh, uh, forget about the bandpass filter okay so we'll forget about the bandpass filter so maybe this is a order 30 filter okay some order right it's in digital so what's a rough estimate for tau i'm sorry okay so so let me just 
right so 60 so tau should be greater than 60 right right so it will be 60 plus something to adjust for the low pass filters delay okay so there will be a delay from the low pass filter okay so maybe some 15 samples right so you don't know what the sampling rate is so i can't really tell you exactly what it will be but there will be a 15 sample delay here and then there is a 60 delay because of the filtering do you see that because of the transmit filter and the match filter right the transmit filter was delayed by 3t then this guy which is match filters once again delayed by some huge amount but still it will effectively cause a delay of 3t to your uh, to whatever is happening so roughly some 60 and then the order of the filter also will play a role so it will be around that time so this delay has to be taken care of okay so once you do the sampling you will get back your uh, get back whatever it is you are doing okay so like i said all these things are done in digital usually so you do a convolution here with a sampled version and you get the answer okay so well this is also complex okay so 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 once again all these problems exist so when if your f1 is not equal to fc and if your theta is not zero then you will get rotated versions of your constellation okay so in fact you keep on rotating if f1 is not zero okay so all these things i'll illustrate with some matlab programs that i have so i think we're running out of time or maybe we have like some six or seven minutes uh, so i don't know if i can really fire up my matlab programs to work in five or six minutes so we'll stop here for today so we'll declare an early closing for the class uh, but but uh, I'll come back next class and show you some MATLAB programs where all these things are easier to see. Okay, so once I start showing MATLAB programs, it'll be easier to see, but the learning will be lesser. Okay, the only way you'll really learn is if you write those MATLAB programs yourself, and then or MATLAB or C or Scilab or whatever you prefer. Okay, so you write those programs yourself and see it. It's very easy to write. There's nothing in these things. Okay, so you just write a sequence of lines. It'll be in fact like a 10 or 15 line program which will quickly do all these things. Okay, so do that.